Buongiorno, what's poppin'? Your boy Big Rich, under the weather, but not down and out. You understand what I'm saying? We may be under the weather, but we ain't down and out. Now listen, I posted three videos yesterday. Now a lot of people didn't get the alert. I'm starting to figure out maybe if we do back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back videos like I did yesterday, the alert may not go out on all of them. So please go into the playlist of Mob Season 2 and look at the three stories that were posted up on January 30th. 2020 yesterday i did them all in the morning all right so go check them out because a lot of people didn't get the alert let's get right down to business gentlemen wipe your feet on the rug throw some smoke in the air all right let's go joe waverly colombo wise guy back in brooklyn former colombo acting boss joe joe waverly kasaki 78 who is suspected of ordering a string of gangland hits as well as the murder of an nypd cop back in the day is currently residing in a brooklyn halfway house located near where the battle-scarred veteran mobster came up on Waverly Avenue in Fort Greene. According to Gangland News, which today reported that he was released from a federal prison in Kentucky last month. Joe Waverly will depart the halfway house this May, according to the BOP, when he completes a 20-year prison sentence handed down to him for copying to four gangland slayings, including the 1987 mistaken identity murder of administrative law judge George Arnwald who was the father of a former federal prosecutor who the late Colombo family kingpin Carmine Jr. Persico condemned to death. In 2004, the alleged one-time acting boss copped to racketeering charges, including ordering the Arnwald murder. Kasaki had even personally scouted the Manhattan law office that the two Arnwalds shared. Kasaki, who progressed in his crime career and moved from Brooklyn to Deer Park on Long Island, will have served about 17 years in prison when all is said and done. In 2013, Kasaki, almost a decade into racketeering sentence, was acquitted of one murder charge he fought in court, the execution of NYPD officer Ralph Dawes, who was shot five times and killed in 1997 by a Colombo hit team near his Sheep's Head Bay, Brooklyn home. Kasaki had been elevated up the Colombo family hierarchy the year before the murder. Law enforcement began eyeballing Kasaki as a suspect from the get-go. Dawes had married the mobster's ex-wife, Kim Kinnaw, who had a thing for wise guys. Her other ex-husbands include wise guys Thomas Capelli and Enrico Carini, who was rubbed out in 1987. Then Kinnaw broke the pattern by marrying a cop. Members of the hit team included Dino Big Dino Calabro and his cousin Dino Little Dino Saracino, who were shooters, and Joseph Joey Caves Camperiello, who drove a crash car. Tommy Schatz Gioelli played a role in relaying the hit orders from Kasaki. At Gioelli's 2012 racketeering trial, Little Dino was his co-defendant. The jury found that Gioelli's role in the Dolls hit was not proved. There was little evidence of Kasaki's involvement and no testimony to highlight the anger prosecutors alleged he had been feeling regarding Kinnar's remarriage. An alternative theory behind the murder involved Russian gangsters and was supposedly tied to some coincidental happening. Three weeks before the hit, Dolls was sideswiped by a van in an unsolved hit and run. A day prior to that, a limo driver shot at a Russian nightclub across the street from the cop's apartment. The killing of a member of the NYPD caused anger across the city, and not only cops. Prosecutors allege that according to confidential informants, top figures in other New York crime families were furious over the high-profiles doll sling, and some of those figures were demanding that the Columbo's murder whoever shot the cop. Some in the Justice Department initially were demanding Joe Waverly's head, but the feds dropped their death penalty effort before the trial, substituting it with a 100-year prison sentence. Kasaki mooted it when he was ultimately acquitted of the notorious 1997 execution. Joe Waverly was a badass dude back in the day. In 1976, three wise guys tried to kidnap him, but he wasn't having any of it and fought back and killed one of them, getting shot twice in the process. Then, with bullets lodged in both his chest and hand, Joe Waverly got behind the wheel of his car and drove all the way to the police station with one of the bodies of the kidnappers in the back seat. Kasaki almost met fate again on February 26, 1992, during the Colombo War when a hit team descended while he was picking up clothes at a Brooklyn dry cleaner. 
Joe Waverly was nearly killed. He lost a testicle. Justice Department Special Prosecutor William Arnwald was one of the top organized crime prosecutors in Manhattan in the 1980s. He probably raised the ire of many wise guys back in the day. But what he did to inflame Carmine Persico, the then imprisoned boss of the Colombo crime family, who died in prison last year, was never truly touched on by the feds. Persico had more than enough power to write a death warrant. In this case, he passed it to Kasaki, who gave it to the brothers Enrico and Vincent Carini, both Colombo soldiers, and Frank Smith, an associate who was close friends with Vincent Carini. The trio tracked not the intended victim, but his father, George M. Arnwald, 78, a civil lawyer and parking violations hearing officer, and shot him dead inside Young Chinese Laundry in Long Island City, Queens. Botching such a piece of work for a mob boss was an era of near biblical proportions. Prosecutors revealed the details in 2003 when they unveiled a sweeping indictment some 16 years after the murder and the string of related murders that followed. Murders are never forgotten, Rosin R. Moskoff, the then U.S. attorney in Brooklyn, said at a press conference to announce the charges against Kasak and 12 others, which included murder, allegations, and a host of traditional organized crime schemes such as extortion and gambling. Two Lucchese wise guys were among the indicted. By 2003... Arnwald, the son, and the, true intended ar- and the true intended target had departed the organized crime strike force and was a defense lawyer in White Plains. He told the New York Times that he had never personally prosecuted Persico and was perplexed about why Persico had apparently found him disrespectful. There had always been suspicions, he said, that his father's killing involved people who had meant to kill him. Quote, it's difficult under any circumstances, he said, after he learned about the new charges, but it makes it more difficult when he was basically an innocent victim of something that was intended for me. That just makes it more painful, unquote. While he had once prosecuted Carmine's brother, Alphonse Alleyboy, the case had ended in an acquittal. Back in 1987, Joe Waverly responded to the botched hit by ordering more hits on the Carini brothers. Then Kasaki sent the shooter to kill those hitmen. Kasaki ordered a hit on the hitmen who killed the hitmen. As per feds, Lucchese soldier Carmine Variali and Bonanno associates Frank Santora shot and killed the Carini brothers who were found dead on June 12, 1987 in the back seats of separate cars parked in Sheep's Head Bay. While driving back from the double Carini funeral, Kasaki was in the car with Frank Smith when they drove by Variale. Kasaki pointed at him, identifying him as one of the Carini shooters. Then Kasaki and Smith went to get a gun, but they were unable to find the Lucchese wise guy again that day. Later, as per prosecutors on September 23, 1987, in broad daylight, Frank Smith unleashed a hail of bullets that cut down and killed both Variale and Santora outside a Bath Avenue social club. Kim Kinnar was married to Enrico Carini when he was killed. While a widow, she served two stints. Kinnar married Kasaki, and they later divorced, and she married Dolls. All right, so great story. Salute to Ed Scarpo from Cosa Nostra News. Thank you for the article. And, of course, salute to Shattered, who found it for me. Um, we will talk soon. Mob Story Season 2. Make sure you guys like the video. I haven't said that in a while because the likes have been up. But please, like the video. Make sure you go to the playlist, Mob Season, Mob Story Season 2, and check out the three videos that were posted up yesterday. I don't think all the alerts went out. We did two Mob Stories in regarding to football because the Super Bowl is Sunday, and we did one Dranqueta Weekly News video. So please check those out. Thank you very much. We will talk soon. Everybody have a great Friday. Hey, if I'm too sick to talk to you guys over the weekend, we will be back Monday. Salute.